Hey everybody, this is Craig Cottle, Director of Nature Blind School. There's all kinds of really cool things that you can see in the outdoors. We're going to be looking at tracks, we're going to be looking at trees, we're going to be looking at how to use a map and compass, and we're going to be looking at a bunch of plants. So follow along with me and Tracker and let's see what we can figure out. Good boy. This is my Tracker dog. What he and I are getting ready to do is share some information on how you can become a tracker too. So follow along and we'll see what we can find. There's two very important things if you want to start tracking other animals. And that is, first, you have to be able to find them. Number two, once you find them, you have to be able to identify them. We're going to talk about both. The first thing I want to make sure that we know is that you don't just wander aimlessly looking for tracks. One of the things that's really important to do is to start looking in areas that I call track traps. These are areas where you're likely to find animal tracks. Let's talk about a few. A place like this is fantastic. This is just a mud puddle along a trail or a road. And what you can easily do is find a bunch of tracks in a spot like this, mainly because this used to have water in it and animals would come to it to drink. As the mud starts to dry, it holds those tracks and makes it easier for you to be able to see them. Let's go take a look at another spot. This is a fantastic place to start looking for sign out in the middle of a wilderness. And what I mean by that is that you take some forested area and where it opens up into a open area and animals love to lounge and walk and feed along these types of changes where it goes from one type of ground to another type of ground. And so just by locating wildlife openings in something like this is gonna be a fantastic spot to walk right along the edge of the woods and see what it is that you can see in this area because they'll start to show up rather quickly just looking in a spot like this. Now I've got a big surprise for you back at the table. What we're gonna do is I've made some casts of various tracks. What we're gonna take are those casts and make them make a track in some sand so that you can see what they look like. And we'll talk about the individual pieces so that when you look at a track, you'll know, hey, I'm looking at a dog track or I'm looking at a cat track or this is what a raccoon looks like. This is what a deer looks like and stuff like that. So let's go back there and check it out. All right, now we have a mobile track trap and we're gonna put some tracks in it. First one I'm gonna put in, something that's gonna be real obvious for a lot of people. You've probably seen this one before. Let's talk about it. So this is a dog track. Here's some things to note about a dog track. It has one, two, three, four toes. It has a heel pad. And almost always in dog tracks, you see the claw marks. So if you look at the cast, you can see this right here. You can see the claws in each one of these. And you can see the heel pad and the four toes. Also, the outline of a dog track is almost always about the shape of an egg. And so when you see this, this are going to be the indicators that you have seen a dog track. Now let's take a look at a cat. So if you were to make a guess, does the cat have claw marks in it too? Let's take a look. This is actually the cast of a bobcat. Boom! It also has four toes, just like the dog. One, two, three, four. It has a heel pad, but you can tell you don't really see the claw marks in the cat track. That's one of the things that you can tell is a difference between the two. And the cat track almost always looks like a circle if you draw a line around the outside. So let's put them right next together. Dog track, looks like an oval. Cat track right next to it, looks like a circle. You see the claw marks in the dog, you don't see the claw marks in the cat. One, two, three, four toes, one, two, three, four toes. So that's very different than what a lot of people think. Claw marks 
in a track almost always point to a dog. And if there are no claw marks and it has four toes and it looks like this, it's oftentimes gonna be a cat. Now let's take a look at something that's a little less common. What's that look like? That's pretty cool, isn't it? Let's point some things out that look very different than what we looked at before. First off, we have one, two, let me point with this, one, two, three, four, five toes. Before we were only looking at four. We do see some claw marks. We've got one here, one here, one here, barely one right there. And we have a real long heel pad right here. This is the track of a juvenile, a young black bear cub. Black bears almost always show five toes. And if you look at it just here without the claws, it kind of looks like a human foot, doesn't it? But when you put those claws on there, makes a really big difference for what it is that we're seeing. This is a juvenile black bear. Now let's look at some tracks that again, you can probably see in every county in Kentucky. This is a deer track. You have two toes. They're pointed towards the front and they're rounded at the back. If you draw a line around this one, a lot of people say, huh, looks like a heart. Isn't that cool? One of the things that you'll see oftentimes with deer tracks, you can kind of see it with these two, is there's actually two deer tracks here. There's one that's underneath and there's one that's on top. It's very hard to see, but that's what we call direct register because when a deer puts its foot down, let's say its front foot and it's walking this way, as it puts its foot down, the back foot will come up and when it steps on the ground, will almost always step right on top of the front foot and you'll have two tracks that are sitting right on top of one another. This is what we call direct register. This is another really cool track. I often find these around some garbage cans, even in a city. If you have any sort of food source out in the middle of a farm, you'll often see this as well, like in a barn. Check this one out. That is a raccoon track. Let's talk about some things that identify it. It has one, two, three, four, five toes. It has a heel pad and it has claws almost in every single track that you'll find. You'll see for every toe, you'll see these claws. Now, if you draw an outline around it, it often likes, looks like a circle, much like the cat track did. But the difference between the cat track is a cat track only shows four toes, whereas a raccoon shows five. You might be real surprised at how big this next one is. Check that out. This is a wild turkey track. It has three main toes, one, two, three, hard to see right here, but you have a heel pad right there, almost about the size of a dime. And oftentimes you'll see a really blunt, what looks like a claw on the end of every toe. That's almost as big as my hand is, probably is as big as your hand is. You'll find wild turkeys in a lot of wilderness areas in Kentucky. It's a fun one to find because they gobble, 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 gobble at you. Who, who, who do you think this next one is? You're right, it's an owl. This is so cool. Owls, as you probably already know, like to stand on branches. And so they'll often have one, two, three, and they'll have a big toe in the back to grab hold of things that they eat, as well as to hold on really good with branches that they're standing on you'll see that they also have some really big claw marks that show up in a track. And that is definitely there to help them grab their food so they can hang on to it while they eat. Have you ever noticed that some birds hop on two feet together? This particular animal right here is a woodpecker. It's got two toes in the front, two toes in the back. 
which makes it real easy for them to grab a hold of a tree and walk up the side of a tree, hang on, do their business, peck, 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 get some bugs out, eat really good, and then fly to the next one, land on the next tree. And so this is an indicator of a woodpecker. All right, let's take a look at something that's important to understand. Both of these are cat tracks. This is a mountain lion, one, two, three, four toes, same heel pad. This is a bobcat, one, two, three, four toes, same heel pad. So a mountain lion track is gonna be almost as big as the palm of my hand as an adult. A bobcat is gonna be much smaller, and then if I had one for a house cat, it would be even smaller than that. And so knowing the different sizes of tracks is important as well, so you don't walk out and see a track like this and think, Oh, there's a mountain lion in my woods. It's probably just a bobcat or a house cat. Now let's do the same thing with dogs. Over here we have our coyote track, one, two, three, four toes, heel pad with claws. Over here we have a gray wolf, one, two, three, four toes, heel pad, claws. But look how different the sizes are of these two animals. This is a wolf. This is a coyote. So it's hard to think that you're seeing what could be a wolf when you're actually just seeing somebody's big St. Bernard or their big dog out in the woods because we don't have wolves here in Kentucky. But we do have coyotes. So knowing the difference in the size, think about it. The wolf is bigger than my hand, really. The coyote is much smaller than my hand. It's a big thing to make notice of when you're looking at tracks in the outdoors. And the last one that I have to show you is very, very special. Look how big this is. If I make this track, it's bigger than my hand, a lot bigger. Let's point out what we have here. One toe, two toes, three toes, four toes, and big claw marks way out there. This is a track of an American Eagle very cool track, very big. Imagine as you're seeing a big eagle, the symbol of America flying through the sky. This is how big its foot is. Come down and get the things that it likes to eat out in the woods and on a lake in particular. They love to swoop into lakes and grab fish, take them back up to their nest, the American eagle. I hope, if, I hope you've enjoyed looking at these tracks. This has been fun for me. I hope it's been fun for you. Next time you get out, make sure you're going out with an adult so you can look for tracks. Look for those mud puddles. Look around to see if you can see any tracks in them. When you go hiking in the woods sometime, if you ever get a chance to do that, then look in muddy areas where a creek crosses and see if you can see any tracks. It's like playing detective and it's a lot of fun. Come on, join in. Let's learn together.